Thank you for turning to 10, your news leader. 10 News Conference with Gene Valicenti continues right now. But now, with the Hopkins administration and that old guard they brought back from the 70s and 80s, not only do you have to know a guy, but you have to donate to the guy, and you have to use the guy's friends to get anywhere in the well, city. Well, those are pretty serious allegations. They're not really. This is what's going on. Well, that's Barbara Ann Fenton Fung. You recall her husband, uh, Alan Fung, was the former mayor of Cranston when he was friends with Ken Hopkins. They've had a falling out, and so has she. She wants to be the new mayor. She's going to primary Republican Mayor Ken Hopkins coming up. In the meantime, I've got the mayor in, the incumbent who wants another shot. You just heard that. You're really chomping at the bit. In fact, you came on the radio with me right after she said that, that mm -hmm. you have to know a guy in your administration to get things done. This is a fresh audience here. What do you say? Yeah, Gene, we're talking about my integrity my name, yeah. I do not pay to play. I am an honest statesman. I work hard for the city of Cranston. My decisions are made based on what's best for the city. It has nothing to do with political contributions. Yeah, well, her specific allegation was that the guy who was involved uh, with, with an old complex in your town that has since closed, that as soon as he started to cozy up to one of your friends, uh, everything seemed to grease the wheels. Everything went smoothly for him. You can fill in the details, but that's my recollection. Yes, and again, she's way off base. When you don't have anything to contribute, uh, when, when you're not involved in the city of Cranston, you don't know what's going on. And when she represented us at the State House, she brought nothing to the table for the last four years. Yeah. I have been being mayor of this city. We, we've done a great job establishing uh, a finance record that's second to none. We've got a double A plus rating uh, with the bonding agencies. We're bringing new businesses into the city of Cranston. Uh, these are the things that I continue to do. I continue yeah. to be the mayor. All right, but how could you say she's not involved? She was the former first lady of Cranston. She lives in Cranston. She represents a Cranston district. She took out Nick Mattiello. So let's be fair here. And she says with regard to that Cranston print works, that as soon as this guy cozied up to your friends, everything got done. Well, first of all, she, she made a mistake, which is a lack of information on her part. Uh, the Moses family that she attacked mm -hmm. are outstanding friends, but members of, of our society, of our city. Yeah. Uh, she made a mistake. She talked about the print works, and he was a middleman for a company out of New Hampshire. He had nothing to do with the ownership of that property. Because they've been giving me f uh, donations, I, I don't play those games. I'm not sure if she's familiar with those types of, that style of government, but people who know me know about my integrity, my honesty, and I will deliver a good service to the people of Cranston, but I do not play political games, especially when it comes to contributions. She really got under your skin with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it, that I, was the beginning of it. You have something to tell me about how the funks operate, maybe? Is there something that you're holding back? Well, I can tell you about the relationship and how it became strained. You had a terrific relationship. Go yeah, ahead. Tell we me did. how everything went we south. Did. And I actually went back and looked at some of the some of the comments that we made to each other in the past yeah. that were on social media. And I come to find out that Alan supported me as a good friend. And I supported him. I mean, he had three failed campaigns, two for governor and one for Congress. And I stood by his side through every single one of those yeah. campaigns. Right after that, when I became the mayor, he came to me looking for business for the law firm that he was working for. Called you up? Met with me for breakfast. Okay, and? And told me flat out, I need business from the city of Cranston for my law firm. I'm a partner now. And I said, Alan, I don't play those games. If you get legal business from the city of Cranston, it's because my solicitor appointed your company. I do not pay to play in the city of Cranston. He got upset that I didn't give him work for his law firm. And he got up and he walked out, and ever since then there's been a strained relation. Now was there something that he did uh, uh, wrong? Was there wrongdoing there in coming to you and asking you for law firm, or was it a perfectly legal solicitation by a lawyer who's looking for work? What well, are you alleging here? You, you, you can take it the way you want it, Gene. Well, how did you take it? I, I took it, I, I was offended by it. I was offended that, that he would use my friendship, that he would use my position as mayor to use taxpayer dollars to support his law firm. So he came to you and said, listen, I'm going into business, I'm, I'm with this law firm, and I need to catch and kill. This is the, this is the term the lawyers use. I, I eat off what I catch. And he came to you and he said, I want work from the city of Cranston? Absolutely. And I'm not the only one. 
There else? are other people in the city that can come forward and say the same thing. Uh, my chief of staff uh, is one. There are other people in the city that had the same conversation with him. And ironically, within a week after that conversation, he lost his job with that law firm. And I got a contribution from that law firm to my political campaign. So I don't pay to play. I don't take money to make my decisions. My decisions are based on what's in the best interest yeah. of the taxpayers of the city of Cranston. Well, you're making a serious allegation. By the way, she made one against you. She, she said you're pay to play. And she cited specifics. Now, you're making a specific allegation against him. Was there anything... Listen, uh, did he offer you money? Did he offer you a deal? Did he say you don't have to go about this procedure? What was it? Make it, make uh, it fine the, point on The insinuation me. was I helped you get elected. Now you need to help me in my law firm. And I don't play those games. I am honest. I, am, I have integrity. And I've told my kids since the day they were born, remember your name and your word. Those are cherished mm -hmm. in the Hopkins family. And she's attacked that on a no number of occasions. And uh, it's wrong, and I just won't play those games. So you said no to him. Whatever we do is going to be done above board, out in the, out in the open. He walked out angry. You Absolutely. And you haven't been friends since. We haven't talked since. As a matter of fact, I went to dinner last night, and him and his wife were sitting two tables away from me. No conversation. Uh, they looked at me, they saw me, and uh, it's a very, very strained relationship. And it goes all the way back to that particular argument. So you were in the same restaurant in Cranston. This is a real Rhode Island story. Absolutely. Where were you? Uh, in Which RBOs one? in Garden City. Okay, and he, they were there too? Yeah, they were. It's a small state. All right. Listen, let's get to some other things. Uh, apart from the allegations she's making against you, you've denied all that. Uh, there's this, incident, there's this uh, headline I'm reading that, well, it says you hired your son-in-law as a firefighter. You promoted him, and that's wrong. Want to hit that head on? Sure. Yeah, Gene, what does that say about our fire department chief of staff, the people that run that department, the fire chief, the organization of the, the fire union? They have a specific rule, uh, set of directions that they follow for hiring. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm willing to bring at least three people, the human resources director, the former chief, and the present chief. I'm willing to bring them forward to say that I had absolutely nothing to do in no interference whatsoever. Unlike her husband, who did interfere with the police and did get the city uh, a black eye under the ticket gate scandal. Yeah. There was interference by this office. I don't play those games, and I did not interfere with any hiring uh, of my son-in-law. Right, give, me, give me the history. You're the mayor, and your son-in-law decides to apply to become a firefighter? I completely backed out. I had nothing to do with it. But you knew he was going to apply. Absolutely. I, mean, I assume he tells the father-in-law, yeah. and, and you said what? Go ahead and do it? I said, you, you do it, but you have to get it on your own merits. And he, you could absolutely back that up. That absolutely. There was no influence, no phone calls, no wink, wink, not, not, nothing from not, the father-in-law. Not one. And all you have to do is ask the fire chief. All right. Now, how, now he's progressed. I understand he's gotten a promotion. Anything to do with that? Well, uh, once again, false information. There was a gentleman that took the position. It was a rescue lieutenant. Mm -hmm. The rescue lieutenant took that position for approximately two months. Based on the union contract, they have to, he comes in and tells the chief, I don't want to do this job. I don't like it. So he withdraws on his own. Now they go to the contract, which says, I go to the next in line, mm -hmm. then the next in line. They went down to five spaces until they got to Jake Shackelford. Five spaces until he finally said, yes, I will take that job. That's your son-in-law. Yes, it is. All right. So everything you've seen, you're satisfied. This you're, you're putting, you put, I hate, but not, we don't put you on the oath on an interview, but you, you, it sounds like you're willing to do that. If I ask you, it's... I will put my name in the Hopkins brand and my reputation on the fact that I had absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, when, why, why are others saying just the opposite? And I have to say, not just listening to people, I, you and I know each other, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but someone watching at home would say, wait a minute, the father-in-law is the mayor. He's going to apply for the firefighter's job. Next thing you know, he gets from It's a tough sell. Would you, would you at least admit that? Gene, understand where the Hopkins family comes from. We, we are a family of service to the community. I've got brothers that are state troopers. Uh, brother worked for the Special Olympics. Yeah. People in education. 
I mean, last week they attacked my family, my three kids. Yeah. This is about political mudslinging. I am not going to get into the weeds. I want to talk about the issues on what's best for the city of Cranston. The bottom line is they're in attack mode. I'm in mayoral mode. I want to continue to run this city. Okay. I have to say, listen, I'll be honest with you. I, I work in Cranston. We're in Cranston now. I come mm -hmm. here every day, and I don't have a problem with it. I, I, I have no complaints. I have to also say when Mayor Fund was the mayor, I had no complaints under him, too. The city seems to be running so I'll just put that out here. I, remember, I really don't have a dog in this race. Uh, but I, I'm a little concerned about Costco because it'll be right mm -hmm. around the corner here. And if it ever comes to that old prison site, they may have added traffic, but that would be good for your city. Is Costco still in play? Give me some news. Costco has never told me that they don't want to be here. As a matter of fact, they've told me on a number of occasions that they love the city of Cranston. Recently, the Ordnance Committee rezoned the property. Who comes into that property, the old prison, yep. uh, is going to be a big box or a hotel or somebody is going to come into that spot. Am I hopeful that Costco is going to be there? I hope so. Okay, now you're giving me some news. We're looking at the building, by the way. That's the mm -hmm. old uh, minimum. Is it minimum? Or medium. Medium. The medium. That used to, it's fronts Route 95. Mm -hmm. It's the one you see from the highway. You have to cross Pontiac Avenue, then go on to the prison complex. It's not that big a pastore complex. It's the other part in the industrial comp complex, that right by Channel 10. Now, I thought that was a dead deal, that there was a problem with the developer fighting with Costco. All of a sudden, the whole thing evaporated and looking elsewhere. You're saying that the city council just rezoned that piece of property to bring a big box store in and maybe a hotel. And I'm asking you, is Costco still in play? You said yes. Did you say yes? What I'm saying, Gene, is that it's open for a big box store. It's been rezoned. Whoever comes in is going to be in a prime location. I have never felt that Costco wanted out of Cranston. That's what I'm saying. I think, uh, from my heart, I believe that they still like the location, that they like the city of Cranston, but there is nothing definitive about Costco coming back. Okay. Now, if it does get there, there are... I did hear some grumbling from the people in the industrial park. Channel 10, the Pepsi plant, and the, the, the florist is across the way, and the Tascas. Uh, are we all going to be able to live? Because there's only a few ways in that way and a few ways out if and that's a big if if it comes yeah gene i heard the same thing about top golf when it came in about the traffic and all the the, yeah. the backups on pontiac avenue if you go there now that's one of the most successful businesses in the entire northeast right it's booming and i've met with the top golf people they tell me that it's booming over there that their, their numbers are way up there's no traffic problem because we did the infrastructure first we met with dot yeah. We figured it out. There's no problem uh, with, with traffic there. And if you look at the potential for a big box store where the prison is, it's identical to the one in Dedham. If you go up 95 yep. uh, t towards Boston, which is the one that I go to, it's identical. Okay. There's no, no traffic problems. Before I go to a break, listen, I think if I was to write a headline, I would write it, Costco still in play in Cranston. Would you call me up and say, retract that or no? I, I would say... I would cautionary be optimistic about the fact that a big box store is going to come into that location. Okay. Who it's going to be, I'm not sure. All right. Mayor Hopkins, you stay where you are. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll continue with the mayor. A few more issues. We're just really scratching the surface in Cranston. Rock'em, sock'em politics, boy, in that city. Stay with us. that the Cranston print works, okay? Yep. There's a guy who's a developer there. He reneged on his deal. He owes the city tens of thousands of dollars, okay, okay and got out of it. And that kind of fell through the handing through the administration. It was the Economic Development Fund. Yep. But all of a sudden, he hires Ken's, who's his Ken's campaign chair, okay? A very busy attorney in planning and okay. zoning. And all of a sudden, he gets that push through. Okay, and he's probably saying, oh, as long as I had the right team, I knew I could get these, these deals yeah. cut through planning of the city um, council eventually to get different zoning yeah. and things he needs to do. But he completely reneged on the other side of it. Okay. okay, and he still owes the city tens of thousands of dollars. 
What did she just say there, Mayor Hopkins? That's not correct. Well, what she didn't say was that the loan through the city of Cranston was given to that gentleman mm -hmm. under her husband's watch. That's when he got the loan. We came in and inherited a deficit because that loan went into default. Mm -hmm. The gentleman that took that loan got it while her husband was the mayor. Right, but factually, when she said he hired your person and the things started to open up, doors opened up, what factually is incorrect about it's, that? It's, it's her political agenda. She just wants to get in the weeds and mudslinging. There's nothing been done. Uh, the, the person that she's talking about is a confidant of mine. He's a friend of mine. Uh, there was nothing done illegally or nothing done wrong. Uh, it happened during her husband's administration. Uh, you know what? She also added that Cranston has lost its mojo. Hmm. That, uh, yeah, that the, the things were happening under Alan Fung. That he actually got top golf. Yeah, you were there when it closed, but he got top golf and he moved Garden City along and everything was happening and Cranston has lost its mojo with you. I know I'm not surprising you because you watched yeah. that interview and it got under your collar. Sure. Well, let, let me explain something. I was a citywide councilman for four years. I'm the one that got top golf. He took credit for bringing it in. But I'm the one that pushed the city council through the zoning because this is my neighborhood. I live near Topgolf. I can see it from my living room window. I got a nine to nothing vote, which was almost unfathomable to have a council vote nine to nothing for something in this city. Mm -hmm. I got a nine to nothing vote through. He took the credit because it came through, but I'm the one that worked with Capianatos and Kelly, uh, Kelly Coates and the, the DOT for the infrastructure. I did all the legwork. He took the credit. And you, you reject this notion that the mojo, that things have slowed down, that she saw a lot happening, but all of a sudden it stopped. Well, that's not true because if you look in the city of Cranston, take a drive through. There's construction going on everywhere. We redid Rolf Street. We redid Patuxa Village. We're in the process of doing phase two of E Tree Park, of which her husband voted against. He did not want that development to take mm -hmm. place. I stood up with Councilman Poplowskis. We rebuilt E Tree Park, and now we've got federal funding to come in and do phase two. And I recently just got a letter from uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, another $2 million for phase three. So we're going to take economic yeah. development and bring it all the way down to the Sprague Mansion. You know, you mentioned her husband a lot. Her husband, her husband. At what point do we detach her from her husband? Well, when, as soon as she stops using his name for her benefit. Uh, obviously, Alan was popular. I was friends with him. Yeah. But she continues to use him to gain political advantage in this primary race. The bottom line is yeah. she's not Alan Fung. She has to run on her own merits, like just like I am doing. Yeah. And for the last four years, I have led this city to unprecedented economic growth. The people feel safe in the city of Cranston. They love to move here. Try buying a house in Cranston right now. Yeah. The prices are through the roof. We're building new schools. Uh, we just completed Garden City School. We're building uh, Gladstone School. My commitment to education is foremost. We are a safe city, and people want to come to Cranston. Was the Bud Long pool a disaster? Absolutely how, how not. Much is, how much of that is in your hands? Well, let me put it this way. I'll take credit for the fact that we're putting a new pool in over there. The council gave me $4.7 million to either fix it or build something new. Okay. Gene, that pool was built in the 1930s. The underbelly is broken. In that administration knew when they put this liner in, they knew that it was broken underneath, that the liner was not going to work. Since we're talking about water, you've got flooding problems in western Cranston. Streets that never flooded before. Mm -hmm. You're concerned about that? Yeah, I am. And, and I've met with FEMA. I went down to Washington and met with uh, Senator Reid. Uh, we've had uh, people come in from FEMA, from the SBA, uh, to work on this, these problems. Uh, the underbelly of the system yep. across the state is a problem. Flooding isn't unique to, to Cranston. Johnston has it. It's the underbelly. All right. Well, some, uh, you, there's a persistent part of Cranston that floods all the time over by the railroad trestle. This is a little different. If you get in again, I guess you're going to have to address that. I only have about 30 seconds left. Just take 10. Are you still in the fight? Because Absolutely. it's a nasty game, boy, in your town. Absolutely. It's not my style. I want to be mayor. Yep. I want to stay mayoral. 
I want to stay above the weeds. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to say this is what I've done. Right. This is what I'm going to do. Mayor Ken Hopkins, thanks. Good luck as you go ahead. And, and the charges that you've leveled today, I will get the Barbara Fenton Fung's response, which is only fair, as I did to you. Thank you, Mayor. You're and welcome, Thank you. James. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you again next week.